This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today my topic is the malabsorption syndrome. Basically, uh, before starting the malabsorption syndrome, first of all, I would like to tell you that what is malabsorption. So, malabsorption as its name is indicating mal and absorption. Mal means abnormal. Abnormal or you can say defective. And absorption is the procedure through which the substances they are absorbed from the small intestine so this is the malabsorption means defective absorption so defective absorption of the vitamins the vitamin a d e k water soluble and the fat soluble vitamins the fats the carbohydrates the proteins minerals water so their defective absorption is called as the malabsorption clear now the most common clinical presentation most common clinical presentation of malabsorption is chronic diarrhea means most of the patient they will present to you with the chronic diarrhea clear now what is the hallmark of malabsorption hallmark of malabsorption this is a very common term you know about malabsorption but uh, before discussing the syndromes, I am just giving you a quick review of the malabsorption. So what is the hallmark of malabsorption? Steatoria. What is steatoria? Steatoria is basically the fats appearing in the stool. So this is basically a hallmark because when the fats they are not absorbed, so they come appear into the stool and that is called as the steatoria. Clear? So this is the hallmark of the malabsorption. Then you all know that vitamin like vitamin a vitamin d vitamin k vitamin b12 clear if vitamin a is deficient so the patient presents to you with the night blindness clear then if vitamin d is deficient patient will be having the hypocalcemia or osteoporosis may also be there in the vitamin D deficiency if vitamin K is deficient there will be easy bruising in the patient if vitamin B12 is deficient so we all know it may lead to the megaloblastic anemia megaloblastic anemia neuropathy may also be there the vitamin B12 deficiency so if these deficient these uh, vitamins they are not absorbed they may result to these deficiencies clear so this is about the brief review about the malabsorption now what are the malabsorption syndromes that we are going to study basically we are going to study five malabsorption syndromes how many five malabsorption syndromes number first malabsorption syndrome is the celiac disease that is our today's topic celiac disease number second is the lactose intolerance then number third is the Whipple's disease number fourth is your blind loop syndrome that is also called as the bacterial overgrowth syndrome then we have the a beta lipoprotein anemia so these are the five malabsorption syndromes that we are going to study um, one by one so first of all today our topic is the celiac disease basically celiac disease we have uh, studied in our pathology lectures so the pathophysiology you can uh, see from there clear today we are going to discuss basically the management of celiac disease main uh, our purpose is to discuss the management of celiac disease before but before discussing the management we must know the clinical features of the celiac disease that how the patient will present to you of the celiac disease so clinical features first thing remember this that the celiac disease is more common is more common in females clear it is twice more common in the females now how the patient presents patient will be present to you with the weight loss with chronic diarrhea with flotulence 
clear so these are the features uh, to which the patient will be presenting to you that are the weight loss chronic diarrhea will be there in the patient the flatulence may be there then there also may be anemia if there is obviously if there is iron deficiency it may be lead to the microcytic anemia if there is iron deficiency if uh, there is vitamin b12 deficiency or folate deficiency it can lead to the megaloblastic anemia so the patient may also present with this condition as well clear then we also have in 10% cases in 10% cases we have the dermatitis herpetiformis so in 10% cases the patient also have the dermatitis herpetiformis now what is this dermatitis herpetiformis this is basically the papulovesicular rash papulo vesicular rash that are present on the extensor surfaces of your elbows and your knees so they are present on the extensor surfaces of the elbows and the knees so this is the dermatitis herpetiformis and this occur in 10% of the cases clear so most commonly the patient will be present to you with the chronic diarrhea weight loss anemia like features and the in 10% cases dermatitis herpetiformis so this is the clinical presentation yes and one thing also here to be mentioned that uh, the clinic uh, the, when this disease occur if it is occurring in the infancy if it is occurring in infancy when it occurs basically uh, it occurs in infancy after the 5 to 6 months of the birth when the weaning has been started means when the doctor or the means uh, the means pediatrician asked the mother to start weaning to the child at, at the 5th to 6 months of the age weaning means that in addition of some other diet with the milk with the female milk with the mother milk add some other diet like the cereals so when those cereals are added in that baby the baby if he is having uh, the celiac disease so he will present on this uh, means you can say in these ages 5 to 6 months of the age when the cereals are started and now this baby will be complaining of the chronic diarrhea malnutrition like clear so this is in the infancy in children's when you will be suspecting that it is the celiac disease in children's uh, there um, when there is the growth failure in the children's when there is growth failure when there is delayed puberty puberty is delayed so you will be suspecting that this uh, might this uh, children might have the celiac disease and along with this they also have these features like the chronic diarrhea weight loss is also there so you will be suspecting it as a uh, as a celiac disease clear so this is now after that the celiac disease you all know that it is hla associated so the celiac disease is also associated with the certain other autoimmune diseases so what are the associations of celiac disease associations of celiac disease it is also associated with the other hla associated autoimmune diseases and what are those diseases first of all we have the diabetes type 1 then we have the hashimoto thyroiditis this is an also autoimmune disease then we have the IgA deficiency then we have the myasthenia gravis so there are many autoimmune disease that are associated with the celiac disease we also have the non-Hodgkin lymphoma so these are all the uh, associations with the celiac disease clear now after that we are moving on towards the management what is the management of celiac disease so before management obviously there are the investigations so what are the investigations you are going to carry out in the celiac disease investigations see number first investigation you num not number first what is the gold standard basically endoscopic biopsy is the gold standard investigation of the celiac disease remember this thing this is very important point gold standard for the diagnosis of the celiac disease now basically there are four or greater than four you can say biopsies 
दैट आर टेकन फ्रॉम द ड्यूटेनम बेसिकली सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द ड्यूटेनम सो देर आर फोर बायोपसीज दैट आर टेकन फ्रॉम द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द ड्यूटेनम एंड वन बायोपसी वन सैंपल यू कैन से इज टेकन फ्रॉम द ड्यूडेनल कैप वन सैंपल इज टेकन फ्रॉम द ड्यूडेनल कैप सो दिस इज द एंडोस्कोप एंड वॉट यू विल सी ऑन दिस एंडोस्कोपिक बायोपसी द एंडोस्कोपिक बायोपसी शो यू सम एरियाज मे हैव द लिम्फोसाइटिक इन्फिल्ट्रेशन इंट्रापिथीलियल लिम्फोसाइटिक इन्फिल्ट्रेशन में भी देयर एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर दैट इज द विलस ए ट्रोफी एंड ब्लंटिंग मे बी देयर विद द इन द एंडोस्कोपिक बायोपसी क्लियर सो ऑन द एंडोस्कोपिक बायोपसी वॉट यू आर गोइंग टू सी यू आर गोइंग टू सी दैट देर आर द लिम्फोसाइटिक इन्फिल्ट्रेशन एंड द विलस ए ट्रोफी एंड द ब्लंटिंग clear this is very important and uh, according to the scenario if a scenario is given to you that uh, uh, a baby or infant was there and when the weaning started he starts to develop the chronic diarrhea and after that uh, endoscopic biopsy was done and on endoscopic biopsy there is the villus atrophy and the blunting is found so this is a scenario of celiac disease clear uh, you, we all know that villus atrophy and blunting can also occur in some other diseases also but you have to diagnose it according to the scenario clear scenario may be of the female may be of the infant may be of the children clear having the chronic diarrhea weight loss this these are uh, means pointing you towards the celiac disease so in this way you have to diagnose a scenario clear and on this you have seen the endoscopic biopsy this is the gold standard clear then we have the second uh, test that is the serological testing what is serological testing serological testing basically we have basic three serological testings number first is the anti trans tissue glutaminase antibodies then we have the anti endomycial antibody and then we have the anti gliadin antibodies so these are the serological testing and the serological test of the choice serological test of the choice is this test of the choice remember the serological test of the choice is anti trans tissue glutaminase antibodies clear they are also specific they are also sensitive and the anti endomycel is also sensitive and specific means you can say very specific they are also very specific these two are very specific this is less clear but if someone is asking you that the what is the um, test of the choice serological test of the choice then you have to answer the anti trans tissue glutaminase antibodies and this is according to your davidson book clear here i am also uh, mentioning the reference here you can also see it from there clear so these are the serological testing you are doing going to do in the patient then uh, the minor investigations like the cbc you will do in order to rule out the anemia if there is macrocytic iron deficiency if it is macrocytic then maybe vitamin b12 and the folic acid deficiency may be there then you will also do the electrolytes in the patient why because there may be calcium deficiency there may be some other electrolytes deficiency so those electrolytes in order to rule out those electrolytes magnesium calcium you can do the electrolytes in the patient also so these are the basic investigations that we are going to do in the celiac disease now what is the treatment treatment is very easy of the celiac disease so what is the treatment of the celiac disease number first main treatment of the celiac disease is the gluten free diet you can say lifelong gluten free diet is prescribed to the patient and all the substances that contain the gluten in them they must be omitted clear like the wheat like barley like rye like the oats they all must be omitted from the diet clear so that is called as the gluten free diet then uh, if there are some deficiencies in the patient so you have to correct those deficiencies like the vitamin d deficiency is there if there are certain uh, electrolyte deficiency is there so you will correct those deficiencies in the patient and in some cases uh, in the you can say refractory cases uh, uh, immuno oh, sorry um, corticosteroids are also given immunosuppressant and the corticosteroids they are also sometimes uh, given in those patient who are not responding to the treatment clear so uh, this is about the celiac disease and one thing last that is remaining is the complications of the celiac disease complications 
are basically uh, we have the like carcinomas in which we have the lymphoma lymphoma may also be there a small bowel carcinoma may also be there esophageal carcinoma may also be there in the patient then we have the ulcerative jejunitis may also develop in the patient inflammation like you, you can say the, that may also develop in that patient as a complication clear so these are basically the complication of the um, celiac disease and this is all about celiac disease today we have discussed uh, about the clinical feature of the celiac disease the investigation that we are going to do like the endoscopic biopsy serological testing cbc electrolytes and then the treatment of celiac disease and the complications of the celiac disease so if you have any query any confusion you can ask in the comment section thank you so much allah Hafiz.